This is a Famicast video review of Zeo Drifter for the Nintendo Switch. I'm James Charlton and I reviewed it for thefamicast.com. Zeo Drifter on the surface looks like a cute indie take on Metroid, and it kind of is that. However, we're talking original NES Metroid here, not the more forgiving modern games. The initial difficulty spike is quite brutal here. You're given a choice of four planets to visit, and all seem to be harder than the last. You start the game basically wondering, am I supposed to go here first? Because everywhere seems to contain enemies that are leagues beyond your abilities. But don't give up, little spaceman. You start off with little pea shooter of a weapon, and are faced with enemies that take dozens of hits, while you can only take three hits yourself before you die. Couple that with energy refills being incredibly rare too. Death requires you to go back to the start and losing all the pickups you may have accumulated on the way. This can sometimes mean up to 20 minutes of playtime flushed down the toilet. The first hour or so of this game feels almost like a roguelike, but without the item carryover when you die. However, the thing you do keep between deaths is your own knowledge of how you died and how to avoid it next time. Thankfully, when you do finally meet a boss, you can fill up on energy and your progress is saved. After a while, I adjusted my exploration methods to be much more cautious, inching forward to check on any upcoming death and making every hit count. Gradually, the game became easier as I found health units and upgrades for my gun. Deaths became fewer and far between, and my overall enjoyment increased. The additional power-ups and moves, no spoilers, are well designed and add interesting ways to explore the world. Some have been used in other games before or since, but they all work well and make exploration fun. What I became to realize is that this game is all about learning enemy patterns, when it's best to attack, how to attack, and also when it's best to avoid them altogether. The first half of this game, I beat the game in just about four hours, is very much a brutal and unforgiving tutorial in how to enjoy the latter half of the game. Of course your mileage may vary, you might get the hang of it immediately, however others may get disheartened by its punishing old school design of how it dishes out death. What can't be understated though is how lovely the art and music is for Zero Drifter. The game comes from the brain of Jules Watson and his Atui studio, who are famous for the equally retro looking Mutant Mud series, among others. The precisely designed pixel graphics look stunningly sharp on the Switch and really invoke the original Metroid while still having a neo retro take on it. The foreground slash background switching made popular in the Mud series is used to great effect here, really adding depth to what would otherwise be a traditional 8 bit style game. Overall, it's a tightly designed micro homage to Samus' inaugural adventure. If you can handle its rock hard start, it's definitely worth a shot, if only to encourage the developers to create a sequel that's twice as long. My final score is 8.0. For more video reviews, streams, and podcasts, go to thefamicast.com or subscribe here on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash thefamicast. And be sure to check this channel every Friday for what we call Famicast Fridays, where we update our YouTube channel with brand new content every week.